Dave Chappelle has a new stand-up special on Netflix, and the left is not happy about it at all because Dave Chappelle does that thing that comedians do, which is make fun of things, and that's a hard pill to swallow for people that literally have built their entire identity on being offended by things and victimizing themselves. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. First, I want to say that if you haven't seen the special yet, you should go watch it. Create a Netflix account, enter your information. They'll give you 30 days free, so you can just watch the special. And then once you're done with it, just immediately cancel your Netflix subscription. That's what I did. It's a high IQ move. Um, and I don't know if you guys like Dave Chappelle. I've always been a fan. I think he's hilarious. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to first go through a brief summary of his act, and then we'll talk about why people like Dave Chappelle are funny from the perspective of the audience. And then we'll talk about why the left is so angry about this stand-up special in particular, which again is comedy. So bear with me. Uh, I took some notes here. So he starts off strong talking about Anthony Bourdain's suicide. Uh, and so then he goes, okay, I'm going to try some impressions. And everyone's like, yay, impressions. And he's like, okay, here's the founding fathers. Hurry up and finish that constitution. N word. Uh, I'm trying to get some sleep. Everyone's like, haha, so funny. And then he's like, okay, you guys have to guess this one. And they're like, oh, yeah, guessing. Uh, hey, dur, if you do anything wrong in your life, dur, I'm gonna try to take it away from you, dur. If I find out, you're finished. And then some people in the audience are like, it's Trump, it's Trump. And he's like, that's you. That's the audience. That's what you sound like to me. And that's hilarious. So he goes on to basically call out the canceled culture of resurfacing statements or even just, you know, someone says the wrong thing or the perceivably wrong thing. And then, oh, cancel, they're canceled. You know, this sort of thing that we see on Twitter all the time. And so he starts talking about the Michael Jackson accusers. He says he doesn't believe them. And he says, here's why. <laughs> he goes, I'm what's known on the street as a victim blamer. And he's like, if someone says, Dave, Chris Brown just beat up Rihanna. And he'll say, well, what did she do? And then uh, another example. Dave, Michael Jackson was molesting children. Well, what were those kids wearing at the time? Brings up Kevin Hart. He says that Kevin Hart is basically perfect. He's four tweets shy of being perfect. And he talks about those tweets because Kevin Hart said that he'd break a dollhouse over his son's head if he ever acted gay. And so the Oscars said, oh, you know, you can't host the Oscars unless you apologize. And so then Kevin Hart just quit. And then he ended up apologizing anyway on talk shows. He says one thing he's learned in show business that no one talks about is that you're never allowed to upset the alphabet people. And then he would say the letters, but he doesn't want to conjure their anger. And then he says, too late. I'm talking about the LGBT people. The white men, they're in the G's. They're familiar with the roads of oppression, he says, because they built the roads of oppression. Uh, the G's and L's don't like each other, and they both hate the B's. So the gays and lesbians don't like each other, both hate bisexuals. Uh, he makes fun of the bathrooms and the pronouns and everything. He says that T's need to take responsibility for his jokes because being born in the wrong body is quote a f hilarious predicament and then he goes what if i was chinese born in a black body and then he does an impression of a chinese person oh i have uh, like that type of impression says well this is how i feel inside that was pretty fun everyone thought that was hilarious because it was hilarious then he starts talking about women he says you know what if lebron was a woman does he go to the wnba and score 850 points in a game if women were equal to men there would be no need for the wnba uh you'd be good enough for the nba so you have two choices either be better at basketball or shut the f up and then he says sorry ladies i have a me too headache right now he starts talking about the me too movement he starts talking about abortion he says women have a right to choose they shouldn't have to consult anyone gentlemen that's fair and now ladies to be fair to us if you decide to have the baby a man should not have to pay if you can kill the baby i can at least abandon him my money my choice a play on the my body my choice because his son like had a drill or something and so he you know he said i had to tell my son you know you're probably gonna get shot and you know your dad is famous i talk a lot of they're coming for you, little buddy. Oh, and this was funny. This was not funny. None of this is funny. This is all very offensive. But someone, I could see how someone with, you know, uh, I guess a non-progressive sense of humor would, would think this is funny. He was talking about the drills that I've, I had to go through this. I'm sure anyone watching under the age of 18, 19, probably 22 had to go through these two in, um, in school. And so he was talking about these drills where, you know, all the kids get together and they hide or whatever. And he was like, aren't you training the shooters, too? Uh, <laughs> because they'd be there, too, you know, if they were going to shoot up the school. And he had one. He was like, you know, doing an impression of the shooter. And he's like, yeah, where are we supposed to meet? And uh, I didn't think that was funny, but I could see how some people could think that was funny. Maybe if I were racist or bigoted or whatever you know we know as parents one of us is raising the shooter but we don't know for sure then he says we know if you're a white parent your chances are much higher because shooting up schools is a white kids game 
Uh, he says, I don't see any peaceful way of disarming America's whites, so every black person must register for a legal firearm. That's the only way they'll change the laws. He says, I hate guns. I can't stand them. That being said, I have several. He starts talking about poor white people loving heroin, uh, the, the opiate crisis, destroying families. And then he goes, reminds me of us because these poor white folks look like us during the crack epidemic. Uh, and then <laughs> he says, I even have insight as to how the white families felt watching the black families go through the scourge of crack. Because he goes, I don't care. Hang in there, white folks. Just say no. Uh, he starts talking about buying a gun just to kill a white dude walking on his property. Um, and then he actually, he ends the set by making another school shooting joke about how he went to the dance and then the people were um, giving him weird looks because he had to pay and change to get in. It was like a $3 ticket. And then he goes, and that was the only time I was like, I want to kill everybody at school. And so that's how he ended the set. So the leftists in the media are not happy about this special at all because he makes fun of LGBT people, women, cancel culture, etc. And that's very telling. And that's the most important thing to realize about this, which is that Dave Chappelle did an hour long set during which he jokes about school shootings, suicides, the opioid epidemic. And what's the headline from Vice? Skip the Dave Chappelle special because it's misogynistic and transphobic. That was their big issue with it. That's where the line is drawn. Joking about buying a gun just to kill heroin addicted white people, even joking about school shootings and then saying uh, that they're white people's fault. That's all okay. But not the jokes about the WNBA, not the jokes about the Me Too movement, not the jokes about the LGBT community. That's all crossing the line. And this sort of comedic diversity is the reason that Dave Chappelle is funny. It's the reason that shows like South Park and Family Guy are funny. It's the reason Daniel Tosh is funny. And that's because virtually everything is fair game. Everything can be joked about. That's what comedy is. And so you watch the stand-up. He makes fun of women for a bit. He makes fun of trans people. He makes fun of white people, you know? So, like, I'm, I'm watching him talk about how women suck at basketball. I'm like, haha, yeah, women. Maybe, I don't know, be better at basketball. And then later he's like, if you're raising a white kid, the probability of you raising a school shooter is exponentially higher. And I'm like, all right, that's fair. You got us. So he jokes about everything. He doesn't pull punches. And that's why it's funny. You watch these politically correct comedians that the left embraces and all their jokes are at the expense of first white people and then more specifically men and then more specifically straight people and then more specifically Christians. That's their whole set. And it's like, I can't watch that and find it funny because it's clear that the person delivering the material has an agenda against those people. And I don't find that funny. Comedians that don't have an agenda joke about every race, religion, ethnicity, tragedy, all of it, everything goes. And there's an important distinction to be made between when it's a joke and when it's something more sinister. And this goes for everyone. This is the guy at the office who keeps making jokes at the expense of women and then hiding behind it by saying, what, it's just a joke, take a joke. Because at a certain point, after the repetition of you know targeting a certain group and excluding other groups from target, it's not a joke. At that point, what's happening is the person is using their attempted humor to perniciously achieve a darker end. And so when you're in the audience and a joke is made at your expense, you can laugh at it, you can be a good sport. Maybe it's even a funny joke too, that's a bonus. But if every joke is made at your expense, you have to question if they're really jokes at that point. It's like. We see now with the late night house where every joke and, you know, they're not even funny, but every joke is just, you know, Trump is bad. Men are bad, etc. And then the audience just mindlessly claps like a pod of seals. It's really like a modern clan rally or uh, the two minutes hate from 1984. You can take your pick. And so with these articles, we'll start with the one from Vice. They go through some of the highlights of the special, but they're taken out of context. So you forget that it's within the setting of a stand up comedy performance. And so you're reading it like, oh, my God, I can't believe that someone said that. And so the entire article only mentions the stuff about women, the Me Too movement, the LGBT people. It doesn't say anything about his other jokes, which were arguably much more offensive. You're going to look me in the eye, tell me it's worse to joke about people with gender dysphoria than it is to joke about your own kid and his classmates being shot while they're at school. Doubt. But my least favorite part, the last few lines where <laughs> this guy, he writes, he's choosing to ignore the historic criticism of his style of comedy, along with criticism from the trans community. And then he keeps going down this path. You know, he's going to tarnish his legacy. And it's like, oh, you mean that legacy that he built by doing jokes exactly like the ones you're complaining about? And the article that was published in Forbes is similar. The guy starts by spending a few paragraphs praising Chappelle as a comedian before saying that, you know, this special was bad because it was lazy. It was low effort. Chappelle, he's selling out for shock value comedy. It's like, dude, have you ever heard anything that he said before like that's always the approach you know they criticize it because they were offended by it and then they add the it wasn't even funny or it tried to be offensive but it failed evidently not it was very funny you all are very clearly offended by it and that's because you've been conditioned to react that way to these things because people who have indoctrinated you know that it's a great political strategy it's not that you're preconditioned to be offended it's that you're preconditioned to be offended by certain things that you've been told are offensive because they affect particular groups of people 
whom you've also been told are oppressed. And therefore, you rally against these types of jokes, because if you don't, you lose your greatest political strategy, which is that I'm oppressed. These things are offensive to me. I need to forfeit my rights to a, to a party that's willing to protect me against these things and let me be in my safe space. And it's all working out quite well for them thus far. But even that aside, here's the most important question. This coming from a guy who likes to laugh at pretty much everything. Um, if we allow certain groups of people to chime in and say, hey, you know, can you not joke about that? That offends me. Oh, okay. My bad. I apologize. Another person chimes in another person pretty soon literally nothing left to joke about and it's all arbitrary in the first place why is a gay person saying hey can you not make gay jokes why is that prioritized over a white person saying hey can you not make jokes about white people and they'll say well it's because white people aren't oppressed and that's true because no one in this country is oppressed but it's all arbitrary it's all subjective so either everything goes or nothing goes and no one wants nothing to go because it's more fun when things go so get your chin up stop whining about everything go laugh at dave Chappelle making fun of you because he does a pretty good job you know very thorough, I would say. Hey guys, if you like this video, you can leave a thumbs up down below. You can also leave a comment with your thoughts down below. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking my face if you have not done so already. If you have done so already, do not click the button again. That will unsubscribe you, and I would be sad. Also, turn notifications on so you get notified when I post. Thank you for watching, and may God bless America. We're about to break 100,000. It's exciting. Uh, I said the part. Uh, thank you. So I said thank you so much for watching. Right. So now God bless America. Pow. I may have said that twice. I don't know.